because we've talked, we've talked a bunch of times through Messenger, but never like face to face. I know. It, it's like <laughs> it's like next level virtual. Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so this is my daughter Kira in the background. Hi. Hi, Kira. <laughs> nice to meet you. She's just observing. This is Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Cool. So, how have you been? Very good. Very good. You know, uh, I have two kids myself. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, two boys. Awesome. Um, so they keep me busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but life's been good. I've been working in the studio. This is my studio. I've been working here a lot and uh, been working on some new songs, really exciting stuff coming out. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So you have a new album coming out the 23rd? Did I get that right? So uh, that's the start of my EP release, our, our oh, EP release. Okay. Yeah. So the song Seventh Fire is the uh, title track to the EP. Okay. And I'm really, ex yeah, really excited to release that because we did, we've actually released this demo, these demos before. Uh huh. And as a music producer, like starting out, I, I, I didn't know what we were doing, right? And it just sounded so bad. <laughs> it just sounds so bad. And it's just like, I couldn't allow that to just be out there still and uh so anyway we completely re-recorded all the parts and uh actually i did all the parts myself um awesome. since things have been shifting with the project and uh yeah. it's been going really good yeah awesome. i've been really inspired by stick figure and kind of how their how he does with production was, yeah know, it's just he's awesome yeah so <laughs> been kind of going that route and my brother shawnee i was actually hoping he can be on this interview with me he looks yeah. just like me i don't know if many of you guys have seen him because uh he hasn't been on a lot of the videos but uh he lately he has um, um but we've been jamming out and he's been writing oh. some new songs i've been nice. teaching him how to produce songs nice so is he that was one of my questions is like is he part of your band like do you have a band or is it just you i wasn't really sure yeah, so the me and Sean are like the uh, we're kind of the lead on the projects. Okay. And what we were doing is deciding we're just gonna keep producing music. We're just gonna keep doing what we're doing right now. Just kind of how all the tracks are on Spotify. Just how we're releasing music, keep going that way. But we have a band, and we're gonna start actually uh, creating shows, like actual full-on performances, where we allow the artists to help us create the full the song. You know kind of take the template and just take it out. Cause I like jam music. I like to jam out and yeah. impro yeah. improvisation. <laughs> so uh, yeah, of course we gotta have a band. Live yeah. performances or what's up. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Cause like I've seen you live on Facebook and it's usually just you, but then, I mean, a lot of artists are just going live by themselves just because the pandemic and like a lot of people's bands are like split up and in like all different places you know so i was i yeah. was curious about that how your what your band was like <laughs> well you know to be honest uh, some good friends uh play, people i played music with for a lot of years uh, except recently we got a new a drummer i knew from high school but we never got to play music together okay. and i've just been kind of watching him on this you know just kind of seeing what he's doing with his other projects incredible musician anyway so he's gonna be drumming with us he brought on a bass player um, and I'm really hoping he sticks around because uh, he's just really solid. Awesome. And uh, we'll have a few more uh, performances. Cool. Um, yeah. And then of course we got a saxophone player, or my yeah. friend Brooke, yeah. she's incredible. <laughs> she's, she like, I'm so excited for everyone to hear this song because she has my favorite part in the whole song. Uh, oh, she, cool. en she ends it off with this amazing sax solo and sweet. spills up, I don't know, it's just sweet. <laughs> um. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know. I didn't realize that you had a saxophone player and all that. That's super cool. Yeah, it's cool. We kind of technically were roommates at one point. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. Um, but she was dating uh, one of my uh, good friends I grew up with. And we were living in this backyard in our tiny house. Anyway, she moved in. We got to live together kind of like as roommates in a way. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, it was just it was an interesting journey being neighbors in a way, kind of being in someone's backyard, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. A lot of jams happened though, that was for sure. So that was good. So, so are all of your bandmates local there where you live? Yeah. And yeah. you're it's pretty you're sweet. in Missouri? Yeah, we're here in Kansas City. 
nice. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. It, it's a pretty sweet spot. It seem, uh, it just, I don't know. It's always got a lot of good people here. Um, you know, it's got a great music scene. Nice. And of course, it's interesting with COVID, of course, but we're still having live gigs and people are still coming. Really? So it's been great. Wow, lucky. <laughs> I, I know, I know. It's, I, I totally get it too. I'm in a lot of groups where people are just really not, you know, I'm hearing all different sides of, you know, mm -hmm. this experience. Yeah, there's and, nothing uh, where I am. Yeah, of course we have to do outside a lot of this stuff because yeah. otherwise it's too, uh, um, unless you're at a bar because you can get away without having to, you know, force masks at the bar. Oh, okay. Uh, but that's just like restaurants and stuff. But you have to get in the building with a mask and then, yeah. you know, so there's there's some things we can do to make it safe for everybody. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, make it a, you know, create a good environment to have some fun, you know? Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my husband is a DJ, so I haven't been out with him or anything, but um, he's, he's only DJing one place right now, which he normally has like a different spot that he's at like every yeah. night of the week. But they just open one of the spots where he's at normally and uh, they just have like a small little patio area. Um, and as far as I know, I don't think anyone has to wear masks or anything, but it's just different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, and it's an outdoor venue. Um, um, it's no, it's an indoor, it's an indoor venue, but they like, like made a little space like in the parking lot outside of the venue just so oh, that nice. they could open back up oh well, yeah so that works yeah 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 that's what a lot of places are doing out here it's what we have to do you know it's amazing too it's like uh we do at least have this virtual platform which is really cool and yeah. you know it's cool like someone like you creating all these videos and ways for us to connect and be entertained yeah. and still get the the culture of all this art and music going you know like being shared and alive you know yes yeah. it's, it's really good i gotta do something like i said i got nothing going on where i live so yeah <laughs> trying to keep myself occupied <laughs> yeah, that's awesome yeah <laughs> well we really appreciate you of course yeah, you know no and you know we just started you know i've been a musician for 10 years and i've done a lot of performances but with this project, we're only a year into it. And I was just really, I just thought it was so, what a blessing and opportunity, opportunity to connect with you and be able to connect with other people that are fans of reggae music and. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> so, um, so Missouri, isn't that where Josh Heinrichs is from? Yeah, yeah, I think he lived, or he might be here in Kansas City, but I think he was in Springfield, which is just like, Oh, I can't remember. I think it's just a couple hours away. It's just not, it's oh, just outside. Yeah. You know what? I think I, I saw an interview with him recently. He was, he was talking about Springfield and uh, the Simpsons. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Oh yeah. That's crazy. They live in Springfield, right? I and think the Simpsons? so. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of years since I've seen that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's like, I'm super curious, you know, you being in Missouri, like how did you find reggae music in this scene where you oh, are? Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's not very popular here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely growing, Imagine. you know, and I do have a lot of friends and we do, you know, when I love when, like Slightly Stupid comes through town, IS Harry just came through town. Uh, the last show we had was Iration and uh, they were just, and they were with uh, Ballyhoo. Yeah, that's the last show I saw too. In San Francisco. Yeah, with Ayaterra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Incredible lineup. It was awesome. Yeah. And, uh, so that was the last show I got to go to before. It was February. It was on, I was actually on Valentine's Day. Oh so, man, that's crazy. So mine was on February 7th. Oh wow. That nice. same exact show. That's pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like the last tour. Before yeah. Everything. It was totally the last happened. call. Had yeah. no idea, of course. Um, um but yeah, so starting out with reggae, oh my gosh, it was my brother actually. Um, so he, I don't know, we you know we're twin brothers, but when we were like 15, 16, we kind of went our separate ways a little bit, you know, different friend groups a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, he discovered uh, Sublime and Slightly Stupid, and I kind of you know started hearing that music, and he started showing me. And anyway, that we just got hooked onto it, and you know found Expendables and yeah. 
uh, you know, Valley Hue was just getting started at the time. That was, oh my gosh, time is flying by. I can't believe it's already <laughs> been like over 10 years, but yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so we just got hooked on all that music and it's just, you know, and especially with Bob Marley, you know, it, it, the, creating music that has a movement with it too, like yeah. where we're sharing a message and bringing people together and creating a very positive culture. Mm -hmm. um, that's something really attracted me to reggae music. And uh, yeah, I just want to keep sharing that vibe. Yeah, totally. Keep it alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the story behind your band name? Like, how did you come up with with your the name of your band? Yeah, that's an interesting question. A lot of people ask that. Um, yeah. So it was actually my brother, Sean. Yeah, he, he's just... Uh, He's very an inspirational kind of guy, right? And he uh, is very much into permaculture and, you know, we have Native American roots to it in us. And we're all about like, kind of like being connected with our roots, but also like having a powerful vision for humanity in a way, you know, like, so we have a future for our children. And Seventh Fire came about, I don't know what he was, I actually still need to clarify this with him. <laughs> uh, what actually sparks his inspiration to go find, you know, what found that in the beginning. Um, but when he did find it, it was just perfect because it goes back to a prophecy, a Native American prophecy that speaks of a uh, time, um, multiple times, but we're in the seventh fire. There's a, oh, okay. a it, it's a cycle of events in time. And so, you know, we've gone through the first, second, you know, all the way through to the seventh fire. And what in the seventh fire is a very, uh, very um, uh, important time because we have to make a choice. We've, you know, we've been given a path that obviously is, you know, it's what we're seeing right now is um, filled with destruction. Uh, there's a growing illusion of separation. Um, it's just a lot of chaos going on in the world today. And that's just not a workable thing. It's not a workable relationship with our future for our kids, it's just, it's just not gonna work. Or we can t create a new path that's, you know, it's filled with abundance for all of mankind where we can create and have a relationship that works with everybody, you know? And that's what the Seventh Fire Prophecy is all about, where people come together and have to make that choice. And so we're here just to be in that inspiration to, you know, educate people, to inspire people, motivate people, just kinda, cool. you know? I like it. Be, be that catalyst. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, we're all in this together and we're going to be uh, doing, we're working on a lot of things. We have some big visions with Seventh Fire. Um, we're not going to trademark anything, um, but we are going to start a non for profit to help continue this project and create festivals where we can create um, opportunities for uh, like big things to happen where we can create. Um, and very impactful things like um, educating people and all of us working on a project on the land to be more regenerative instead of leaving trash and you know a lot of the stuff we see at festivals which yeah. I'm not diminishing <laughs> festivals I love festivals they've like yeah. totally transformed my life but I think there's ways we can um, I don't know transform that culture that's just a little more work workable with the environment and yeah. uh, so that's big, that's gonna be a big part of our mission. You know, Cal Cali Roots does a good job of that. Have you ever been to Cali Roots? I am so excited. We, I, you know, I was like, I'm gonna go this year, but no, <laughs> uh, no, we haven't, we haven't been yet. So they're um, like, definitely on my bucket list. It's pretty incredible, like how many, like, you know, at each set there's like a ton of people, and then the next set happens over here, and then so just like everybody leaves. And when they leave, you know, you expect to see like tons of trash everywhere, but you right. just don't there. Like yeah. people purposely pick up after themselves at that festival for some it's reason. A, it's a beautiful thing. You know, also I think with the music, there's a good vibe to it and it creates, a, it attracts a lot of great, good people with good heart. Yeah. And, and it, even when people are like going through dark times, it brings them out of that, that. And it also can open up awareness, connects you with your environment. It's just amazing what, you know, music can do. 
But I think reggae music, I think it attracts really good people. So I absolutely, yeah, that's, totally. that's why I love being here. <laughs> <laughs> it's addicting. <laughs> absolutely. The vibes are addicting for sure. Yeah, I've got that bass as loud as we can stand. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I don't know if you ever saw my interview with Joey Calderio. I, uh, I did I, I, I did the same thing. I, I was just all of a sudden, I was like, I want to interview you, man. I was like, so I just started <laughs> asking him questions just off the top of my head. He's awesome. I love that guy. He's super yeah. sweet. Yeah, I love, I, I love that guy. It's been really cool connecting with him. Cool. So um, do, you, do you have any... Um, like stories behind any of your songs that are interesting, like maybe Grand Rising or any yeah, of your songs or? For sure. Oh yeah, so it's funny, like uh, I'll be talking more about the future songs, but you know, some of the songs I've released are actually some of my newer material. Uh, some of the songs in the EP are songs I wrote, like I wrote way back, you know, my earliest material I've been working on. Yeah. Um, so it's been an interesting journey with music production and songwriting. But now it's like things are flowing for me. So incredible. And uh, I'm gonna just go off on tangent just a little bit and I'll get back to that. That's fine. But Songs for Scratch with uh, Nathan Aurora. Oh, you know, oh, oh my oh, gosh, oh. so amazing. It <laughs> is one of the coolest things ever, you know? I was like, cause I, I am a music producer. I do all the music myself. I you know, completely record, mix and master all the music we do. Mm -hmm. And to to watch someone else, you know, watch him do that, it's just really cool. Um, and I I think that's just been really inspiring to watch. Okay, he, you know, whip that out in ninety minutes. You know, it's like I don't need to overcomplicate this, and I can be really impactful with the music. And so that's been really helpful. And so I've been actually that's been helpful in the studio recently. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I love that. I wanted to share that, but you know. <laughs> You know, with the times that we're in, I just felt like I needed to write music that speaks of the time. It's like, you know, speaks of truth and uh, positivity and connection because there's just a lot of like pain and suffering and just like dis you know, there's a lot of disconnect going on, um, at least from what the mainstream media <laughs> is pushing out and you know, it's just amazing to watch this all unfold. Um, but what I do see is even on social media is that love still continues to grow. It's still the number one hashtag on, on social media. So I'm inspired by that. So when I think I, I want to be a part of that. And so that's what I like to write about, write music about. So Grand Rising is this picture of people coming together, um, connecting to love and singing songs of peace and harmony and um, it's just, you know. Love it. Yeah, you know, just gotta weave that message in for people to sing to and it carries a certain kind of vibration, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, but also, have you? how long have you been doing the backstage lessons? So, I've done two in person and it, I started doing them like about a year ago. And then I've done, three or four ish online um and all of them have been with the ayaterra guys most of them have been with nathan but yeah that's awesome yeah. it's so fun it's so i love that i'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do those right i didn't realize it's been around for a year i just found out uh i saw uh sorry howie spangler he had a post about it and actually i did have a backstage lessons with him nice. about me about music production we focused on vocals sweet it was yeah it was awesome and i was like i had no idea there's a way to connect with these people yeah. you know that i look up to and i just like i don't know yeah i my first lesson i did with nathan it was september of last year and yeah as soon as i heard about it i was on it i was emailing <laughs> i bet <laughs> but at that time I didn't know how to sing harmony yet. I just, well, I didn't know that I knew how. <laughs> right, yeah, it's more natural than you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, so I was super nervous to sing with Nathan, even though I met him. I met him a bunch of times and he knows who I am and stuff. But I was just like, oh my gosh. I was like, 
<laughs> horrified to sing in front of him, but I wanted to do it. You know, it was like, it was one of those things, if I don't do it, I'm going to regret it, you know? And sure. so we just sang along and I sang his parts along with him, but I realized because we recorded it, you can't hear me on the recording because his register is just a little bit too low for me, so I couldn't project. So after it was that, fun. Yeah, after that, I was like, okay, I gotta figure out how to make this better because I'm doing it again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I was like trying to pick up the harmonies on some of the songs that I knew, and I was like, oh, I think I can do this. And so then the next time I booked a lesson with him and Nick because Nick is like the king of harmonies, right? And I figured if, if I wanted to learn how to harmonize, he would be the person to do it. Oh, so, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> and that, that was my absolute favorite lesson I've ever done was when I did it with both. both you did guys. great too. Watch the video. Oh, well, you awesome. saw it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so fun, and I was like, but Give going things, into so it, I was lovely. like, I think I know how to harmonize, and uh, and they were like, well, let's hear it, and it, yeah. it worked out because I didn't know if I was doing it right or not. But yeah. Anyways. You guys sorry, are grooving. Well, I'm tangent. Great. Here, sorry. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> love yeah, it those guys are awesome for sure yeah i'll be booking some more i want to work with them i uh just on more music production and yeah uh, oh nathan would be a great one for sure especially with home studio stuff i i know i had no idea these guys did a lot of their, especially recently a lot of their stuff just in the home you know yeah. and so you picture these like grand studios and stuff which i i'm sure they have but <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think yeah. Nathan was doing it in his yeah. closet before. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mine's like somewhere in this room, like right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are you still doing the Patreon thing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I haven't been promoting it much, but it I've been actually building up videos in there and finding ways I can, can uh, grow content and share value and be able to connect with our fans on a deeper level. Sweet. And uh, so far it's been great. You know, I've got a lot of my local fans here and I got a friend in Canada. Uh, you know, it's, I, I had no idea, I've never met him, but he uh, just found our music through online and just became a big fan of ours. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm still gonna be building that. I was considering and bring it over to Facebook, but uh, they do a really good job of streamlining everything on connecting with people and you know getting content out so i have yet to check that out i know there's a few artists on there yeah i think uh i saw hyrie um do it and i was like all right i'm gonna pull the trigger and do this because yeah. it just makes sense i don't know um I you said yeah yeah i recently uh became friends with brett um on facebook and i've been checking out all of his his stuff on YouTube. He's got so much good stuff on his channel, man. Like yeah. interviews and live performances. And I love the content that he puts out there. It's really awesome. Yeah, it's been great. I just found it like two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he's got, and he sent me some stuff that I'm not supposed to know about, but um, <laughs> that's coming out soon. So keep it yeah. up for that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> I love exciting, it's exciting times. Yeah. I love that music still flowing. Yeah, him and I have been kind of like teaming up since we're doing kind of similar things and sharing the music. And so we've been kind of helping each other out. So it's it's cool to have him. We can like bounce like, ideas off of each other and stuff too. So yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, <laughs> with that because like I'm really the whole idea with Seventh Fire Sunday yeah, at the end every end of the month I'm gonna be bringing the band in. So we're gonna have a full, like fresh, uh, full set performance every single month. Nice. Um, that we'll be sharing our new material um, because I'm like writing a song every single day. And so I'll be Great. teaching these guys the material and so we'll be jamming out probably mostly improv, you know, improving the whole way through it. <laughs> but with the new material anyway. But the other stuff, we'll have a full set of all our original music. Um, Every so last Sunday of every month, that's what we'll be doing. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so this Sunday or uh, this month is October twenty fifth. 
Um, and then basically every other Sunday, just me and my brother are gonna hop on acoustic, share updates, um, just play some music, hang out, you know. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be doing more of those still. Uh, cool. I do really enjoy doing instrumentals. Uh, I whip that out in a couple of days and I just really? love, Good. you know, it, don't even like make complex, just I totally, it was like most of those were one take. I, I do all instruments myself. Um, and I was like, I'm just gonna keep doing that. Um, I wanna build up a portfolio that, kind of like uh, the free flow sessions with yeah, Sticker Gear. Yeah, totally, you should. Yeah. A, um, lot I, people, a lot of people look for stuff like that that they can just jam to, you know, that doesn't have lyrics. I see a lot of people posting that, like, does anybody know any good instrumental reggae music? Right. And, um, there's just, there's not a lot out there, really. Yeah. But I know of anyways. I don't know. Yeah, I know. There's. I wish there was more. I'm curious what artists you listen to and who, what artists inspire you? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I'd say mostly, uh, right, it's been stick figure like for a long time because just seeing, you know, like Sky, how he produces music in a studio is just incredible. For how he started out on that little device, you know, it's just incredible. But uh, lately I've been listening to a lot of like uh, John Brown's Body, uh, Ten Foot Ganja Plant, um, Fortunate Youth, a lot of those guys, um, Tribal Seeds, um, let's see. Oh, Mike Love, uh, and yes. I listen to him all the time. He's just awesome, he's got such a great heart. He's um, my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've been catching his Mike Love Mondays, it's really great. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been fun watching him like learn how to uh, get into the virtual world because he's oh, such a like no. ground. He's such a grounded person, you know. Yeah, he's been struggling with that. I I feel bad because yeah. it's been great every week, but he yeah. he gets frustrated with the technology and um, yeah. and I want to yeah. tell him like, let just don't worry about it. It's all good, you know. But I I totally get him because I'm the same way. I have this commitment to a quality of sound where people, you know, it's just. It's so important, and he, I get that. So, you know, it's just yeah. trials and tribulations we go through, especially with this tech stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. I also I wanted to say I was like, uh, iration when after we saw them, I was so inspired by their performance because I love how they, you know, there's like a pop influence in there too, mm -hmm. and I it, on the it's just really good for that live performance vibe. It's good to you. Yeah. Like Groovy, you know? uh, so yeah. it, it's cool watching those guys perform live. It's fun. Sure. Uh, oh, and of course, I had Terry. We've been talking a lot about those guys. Oh, almost Lord. forgot. Yeah. I listen to them every single day. Um, yeah. I'm committed to making that happen. I want to work with uh, Ayaterra. Yeah. I work with those guys really bad. Um, and Stick Figure, too. So yeah. the, I, I actually already have the song, so like, I already know what I'm going to do. I just need to. Get the demo tracks together. Yeah, they're super sweet, those guys. Yeah, I get, I can tell. That's why <laughs> I'm tracks to the music. Just been following the journey. It's been really fun. Uh, I honestly, I wish I would have. You know, it's like I don't live with regrets. So that was one of my favorite songs too by Mike Love. But um, you know, it's like I wish I would have started earlier. But I am like so so grateful in a way that. Um, I've gotten connected to everybody in a different way than I have before. Yeah. Like, I so it's kind of weird how that happened out of COVID, this whole thing. Yeah, totally. Um, but I've discovered so many more, new, like, new people and the kind of the tribe I want to really, I've been vibing with and I'm so happy and, like, I just feel like we're doing something really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's been bad, but there's been a lot of good that has come out of this year, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, awesome. After this, uh, you guys, after this interview, you can go check out our live stream at uh, 7th Fire Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Um, I think if you're in East or Pacific Time, it'll be 5 p.m., right? Okay. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> Yeah, right. I, I know, I'm learning all the. I'll put it on the screen on the bottom or something. <laughs> yeah. So if you're, you know, Pacific time, I think it's about 5 p.m. 7 
7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, yeah, my, uh, my brother and I are gonna be going live, um, playing some acoustic jams, doing some updates. I uh, got some exciting things we're working on. Um, maybe share some new music with you guys. But yeah, hop on and hang out with us if you'd like. So yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really like, really appreciate you, Jacqueline, for making this happen. Like, thanks uh, for doing this. It was fun. I, I, I'm always happy to like be able to find ways to connect and share the story of Seventh Fire, because uh, you know it's one thing to be a musician and sing these songs and do these things, but it's all meaningless without the people behind it. And so, mm -hmm. I, you know, this is a perfect avenue. I really appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> Yeah, that was love. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> she like can't stand it when I, she, she never wrote both of my kids. Like they never really care when I'm like available, but when I'm not available, then they always want to come love me. Huh guys? They see you in the flow and they're like, oh. <laughs> so thanks everybody for tuning in and stay tuned for more cool stuff from myself and also Shane of Seven Fire. Awesome. Thanks guys. Thank you, Jacqueline. Bye everybody. See ya.